In this video, we'll go over all of the WoW news from the past week and try to compress it into a bite-sized video. This week, Raid Finder in Mythic mode of the new raid opens up. Raid Finder is only the first wing, but I know a lot of people only get to experience the new raids with Raid Finder, so exciting times for you! Also, the Mythic race starts, so expect updates on that in these videos until it finishes up. The Dark Moon Fair is in town this week. It's only around for one week this month, and there are a lot of things that need a shit ton of prize tickets to unlock. So make sure you go there and do the dailies every day if you want the mounts and crap. Also, there's an XP and rep buff if you ride the carousel, so don't forget about that. The weekly event for this week is Cataclysm Time Walking. Ever since they last updated the gear from this event, it's an amazing week to gear up alts, as the vendor sells eye level 880 gear. But I should warn you, Cataclysm dungeon bosses are some of the hardest dungeon bosses in WoW's history. Basically, Cataclysm dungeons are the reason Blizzard will never put out hard non-Mythic Plus dungeons ever again. So you're going to have to pay attention to the mechanics if you've never done them before. I mean, unless they've completely nerfed the time walking versions. I don't know, it's been a long time since I've actually done it. Lots of balance changes went live with today's reset. Too many to list in a summarized news video like this one, so here are some of the highlights. Outlaw Rogues got a buff, Affliction Warlocks got a nerf. Argus got a lot of buffs to his fight to make him harder to kill. The Coven of Shivara apparently had a bug where its health wouldn't scale to raid size. And a ton of Antorus trinkets just got a straight up buff in one way or another. Also a lot of the set bonuses for the new raid got adjusted as well. Mainly buffs though. A lot of stuff being tested on the PTR, like the new Old World Zone scaling. Now there is a lot of misinformation out there as to how scaling works, since I've heard a lot of people talking about it as if you can quest in the starting zone at level 109 or something, and reach max level by only killing boars. What the new scaling will be like is how it works on the Broken Isles to an extent. Each zone will have a new level threshold and everything in the zone will scale with you while inside that threshold. For example, starting zones will scale with you up to level 10. Well, there have been reports that it's actually level 20 despite it saying level 10, so I'll use that in this example. What this means is while leveling in the zone, everything, including quest experience, monster levels, and strengths, plus the quest rewards, will all scale with you up to level 20. Then if you decide to come back to the zone at level 50 or something, everything will be capped at level 20. There is also a minimum level for a lot of the old world zones, like how you can't start southern barons until level 25, despite it scaling all the way up to level 60. Same with northern barons, which you can start at level 10, but also scales up to level 60. Same for all the other zones too, despite all the Kata and Panda zones scaling up to level 90, there are still minimum level requirements to start each zone. Like, you can't start questing in the Vale of Internal Blossoms until level 85. The intent with this scaling is to allow you to actually finish all the quests in the zone, but I think the scaling is a little weird for some of the later zones. Like, not being able to start questing in Wadna Grand until level 98, despite the zone only scaling with you until level 100, two levels later. Who would even bother with Nagrand when you can just go straight to the Broken Shore instead? That being said, that's probably the only negative example I can find. Everything else is pretty darn generous. The scaling also extends to old dungeons as well. So you can do Ragefire Chasm at level 60 and get level 60 gear. They all just have minimum level requirements like the zones. And finally, some data mined info. I'll give spoiler alerts now. So if you don't want to be spoiled on later story developments, here is your warning. Now, it seems a lot of the allied race stuff was data mined, including little nuggets of information on how we get some of the allied races to join up with the two factions, including what happens to our artifact weapons. Turns out we use them to like cure the corruption done to Azeroth by Sargeras' sword or something like that. The exact details are pretty vague, but you're essentially using the power of the weapons to cleanse something which destroys it. I can't see how some of the conscious weapons, like the Shadow Priest Dagger, are allowing that to happen to them. 
So I wonder how Blizzard will handle that for those few weapons who can talk. If they don't have extra dialogues for those three weapons, I'll be very disappointed. Also, what happens to Hati? Isn't her spirit bound to the BM Hunter gun? Does that mean she dies as well? The smaller YouTuber shoutout for this week will be for Six Gamers. Six Gamers does lore videos on Hearthstone cards, which is basically just WoW lore. It's a WoW lore channel, and their videos are very well researched and presented. If you're a fan of WoW lore videos, which judging by the numbers on my WoW lore playlist, a lot of you are, you'll enjoy the channel. And with that, I'll see you all next week.